Suddenly she developed a infection in her knee that uh, was quite strange. And we finally took her in and the doctor finally figured out that she'd actually had septic arthritis in her knee requiring a three week hospital stay. As a mom, I remember thinking, there's something really wrong with this child. And so I remember taking her to the doctor, pediatrician. Something's wrong with Rachel. Oh no, it's just a virus, she's fine, she's fine. And we're like, no, she's really not fine. There's something really wrong. And so we're gonna leave town, go to, uh, uh, to the lake, uh, Lake of the Ozarks for the weekend. And so, oh, we're gonna take her in, just be sure that nothing's wrong with her, serious. Then we were told you have to take her to the, uh, to ER immediately, there's something wrong with their child. So we got to the hospital and um, it was it was shocking. Yes. It was shocking. And then we saw the, to find out it was her it was her and heart. Was, and then we saw the x-ray. We saw the x-ray before the doctor came in and at that time so, you know, we were our untrained eyes knew that this So they did the x-ray and they put up on one of those charts with the lights and so and we're sitting there, you know, anxious and Rachel, I can't remember she's sitting or lying down or whatever and i said i said oh my god her heart is huge and we thought right back in terms of well is this related to the knee infection oh just because she was in icu and she was tiny and little and afraid and it's you know with the 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 initial diagnosis that was the life expectancy was not very long so we were uh I mean, you change your, we're, we're planners, <laughs> and, and so you change your plans immediately. We ha have to do everything we can do to make her life really great for as long as we have her. So we did, we changed, we changed our thinking, we changed the way we lived. We, um, we lived in the moment, and yeah. said the way we, the way we phrased right. it, we really did. It was focused, we took travel, we did a lot. She was on our airplane a lot. But we also got advice on another treatment also. And so that's when we started her on a, on a blood pressure medication that lowered her blood pressure. That was a little, it wasn't exactly experimental, but- It was um, controversial. At they least. weren't sure that it was gonna work, but, um, and now it's standard treatment. Rachel, we tried to give her a normal childhood as we could. And I think one of the things that people that have a sick child or have a child that has heart condition is when one member of the family is sick it affects everybody in the family it's not just that person the first actual memory i have is being wheeled into an operating room with um my with the red dog i remember having it with me in surgery of some kind and then then putting the mask over I knew that something was wrong with my heart and that we were taking care of it and that in the future I might need a heart transplant, but that was way in the future and we would you know, make sure that I, I did as well as I could with the heart that I have for as long as we could, so. I don't really remember any really big changes happening until I got to college. I thought going up to Michigan, going to school in Michigan um, would be great. I was excited to meet new people be in a really, really supportive academic arena with some very, very educated, talented um, young people. And um, I was managing things okay. Um, my heart rate would kind of suddenly do a dip. Um, I was getting lightheaded a lot more and just, I felt off. And um, over the course of that year, um, they ended up putting in the first of three defibrillators for me uh, the day after I finished my freshman final exams. So, so in the midst of all this, so you've, you've uh, have a child who's going through all this. We've come, she's come back locally and uh, well, she's responding well to the, the uh, uh, pacemaker. She comes up with the idea of taking a semester abroad. And as Ira said, we were always kind of encouraging her to have a much you know, typical college life as you possibly could so college abroad was obviously you know a very logical kind of a step for her except here she chooses south africa it was a great great trip but when i was there i started having issues with what i thought was my defibrillator at the time but when i came back i immediately went to my doctors and they said i think i'm like you need to test me for malaria i think i have malaria and they're like what 
I was like, I was in South Africa. These are my symptoms. I have malaria. They did a few tests. They're, they didn't do a malaria test because they're like, we don't have one in our office, obviously. And second of all, you don't have malaria. Your heart failure is back. March 26, 2011 was when I officially went on the transplant list. At that time, they had inserted a PIC line and then I was at home waiting uh, for six months. By the end of August of 2011, my heart rate function was down to 11. And they said, you know, um, we don't have any A positive adults currently waiting in the hospital. And they said, it, now would be a really good time if you wanted to go inpatient. And the moment you go inpatient, your status goes from, I was a 1B waiting, for, waiting at home for six months. And then when you go in the hospital, you go up to 1A. So you're at the top of the list. And when your EF is 11, they're, it's zero, you're dead. Um, and so it was, I decided, with my mom was there, she was a little surprised when I said, okay, yeah, sure. They said, all right, we'll see you on Monday. I waited inpatient. I was up in the CCU at the hospital. And um, six weeks later, I, on my mother's birthday, I had my transplant. It's very unlikely that she would have survived. Without the medication that she'd been on, she would have probably been a, been, the, the heart function would have required some kind of action much earlier. For me, it took about five years for me to fully feel normal and that, you know, I wasn't thinking about my transplant, I wasn't thinking about my medications every day. Thanks to the American Heart Association, that was their, their support research that I know led to that, uh, the, the adoption of that. And I think that really is what extended her life uh, to the point where the technology was much more able to do in terms of the transplant. So I think the Go Red for Women events are incredibly important because I think in the past, a lot of cardiology, cardi cardiac issues have been centered around men. With women, especially dealing with cardiac medications, it's really difficult because a lot of cardiac medications were originally based on men and they were tested on men. So women would have these weird complications that nobody was expecting because they had never been tested on women. So I think incre increasing the amount of research, that's what the American Heart Association is doing, especially with this event, the Go Red for Women, we're putting a spotlight on heart disease and how important it is to really focus on women. And women are not the same as men. <laughs>